Good day, everyone. We are now on the seventh chapter of this course, Building and Enhancing New Literacies Across the Curriculum. This is Artistic and Creative Literacy. These are the objectives for today's lesson. At the end of the chapter, you should be able to do the following. First, characterize artistic literacy. Discuss the value of arts to education and practical life. Identify approaches to developing, designing curriculum that cultivates the arts and creativity among learners. Formulate a personal definition of creativity and design creative and innovative classroom activities for specific topic and grade level of students. In first literacies, art, creativity, play, constructive meaning making by McCardle and Wright, they have asserted that educators should make deliberate connections with children's first literacies of art and play. So the very basic, the very simplistic drawings of our kids, of the learners when they were young. Um, uh, those are what this pertains to. A recommended new approach to early childhood pedagogy would emphasize children's embodied experience through drawing. This would include a focus on children's creation, manipulation, and changing of meaning through engaged interaction with art materials through a physical, emotional, and social immersion. So this is holistic. Right. So the authors of this book proposed four essential components to developing or designing curriculum that cultivates students' artistic and creative literacy. Such approaches actively encourage the creative, constructive thinking involved in meaning making, which are fundamental to the development of the systems of reading, writing, and numbering. The first proposal is that imagination and pretense, fantasy and metaphor. A creative curriculum will not simply allow but will actively support play and playfulness. The teacher will plan for learning and teaching opportunities for children to be at once who they are and who they are not. Transforming reality, building narratives, and mastering and manipulating signs and symbol systems. I remember my cousin here. Um, he is great in grade three and uh, he keeps on talking to himself and he's like um, creating stories it's not actually storytelling but it's like he's creating stories and then he's having dialogue and i remember myself when i was a kid and i just remember I, and i just come to think that uh, didn't my parents thought that i was a bit you know uh, crazy when i was young upon seeing my my cousin so i'm not sure if it's just me and my cousin but probably you also had this kind of childhood moving on active menu to meaning making in a classroom where children can choose to draw write paint or play in the way that suits their purpose and or mood literacy learning and arts learning will inform and support each other so literacy learning and arts learning they come hand in hand actually um based on study uh, those who are artistic and creative do good in their academics also next third is intentional or holistic teaching a creative curriculum requires a creative teacher who understands the creative processes and purposefully supports learners in their experiences so better ask yourself now are you creative or maybe you were once creative but um, because you were told that mm, some things are more important than you have not really outgrown but you kind of left that side of yours okay. intentional teaching does not mean drill and rote learning and indeed endless rote learning exercises might indicate the very opposite of intentional teaching so we are not after memorization here what makes our intentional teaching is thoughtfulness and purpose and this could occur in such activities as reading a story adding a prop drawing a children's attention to a spider's web we are tickling some of their creativity and playing with rhythm 
and rhyme, even the thoughtful and intentional imposing of constraints can lead to creativity. Um, when we present a story, when we present a, a problem in a story, our students actually, or even you, you tend to think of solutions. So that's one way of creating or well, that's a side of uh, creativity of the students co-player co-artist educators must be reminded of the importance of understanding children as current citizens with capabilities and capacities in here in the in here and now it is a vital or it is vital for teachers to know and appreciate children and what they know by being mindful of the present and making time for conversation. Sometimes we think that these are just kids and whatever they say are nonsense, but then these make sense. And if we address these things that uh, pertains to themselves, to how they think, how they feel, you're helping the development of the child interacting with the children as they draw when they are drawing when they do something like very artistic sometimes what we say especially if they, they're drawing in the carpet drawing on the walls we we reprimand them we scold them so you better think of a way so that the kid can still continue with uh, honing his artistic side okay so you just think of what am i supposed to do to stop him from drawing on the walls okay maybe you can do something about the wall Teachers must try to avoid letting the busy management work of their days take precedence and distract them from being. So let's explore this one. Um, please look closely at this picture. Um, we all have different interpretation of this painting. Please write yours and send it to our Google Classroom, which I will be uh, posting the classwork. Right. So, uh, artistic literacy is defined in the National Coalition for Core Arts Standards, a conceptual framework for arts learning in 2014 as the knowledge and understanding required to participate authentically in the arts. While individuals can learn about dance, media, music, theater, and visual arts through reading print texts, artistic literacy requires that they engage in artistic creation processes directly through the use of materials. So um, this is kinesthetic and at the same time aesthetic, wherein they really have to work. They really have to... They need to move, okay? They need to feel the paper, the pen, the paint, whatever, how it is drawn. You do not just explain things to them. Um, example, if you're going to uh, um, introduce the how to create colors or like from mixing, example, you'll be making green. What colors do they need? So let them make the colors, right? Right, so um, while individuals can learn about dance, media, music, theater, and visual arts through reading, print text, artistic literacy requires that they engage in artistic creation processes directly through the use of materials, either charcoal or paint or clay, musical instruments or scores, and in specific grades, concert hall, stages, dance rehearsal spaces, arts studios, and computer labs. Probably you can still remember that when we were in elementary or maybe also in college we are taught uh, high school also taught um the different uh, what is it uh, notation i can't remember musical musical like scores where you have the c clef the g clef the number of notes the half okay, i i can't remember them clearly and the reason for that is i wasn't able to put that into practice right okay we, we are taught that this is one fourth this is one half but so what okay that's why I just forgot about it. Next. Researchers have recognized that there are significant benefits of arts learning and engagement in schooling. The arts have been shown to create environments and conditions that result in improved academic, improved academic, social, and behavioral outcomes for students from early childhood through the early and later years of schooling. However, due to the range of art forms and that diversity and complexity of programs and research that have been implemented, it is difficult to generalize findings 
um, concerning the strength of the relationships between the odds and learning and the casual mechanisms underpinning these associations. So culture and the arts has actually have, have proven that um, it is closely related or linked to the development of the academic performance of students, of uh, learners. However, it's n there's just no specific um, study as to what type of art because there's like a, a wide array of arts. The flexibility of the forms comprising the arts positions, students to embody a range of literate practices to the following, use their minds in verbal and non-verbal ways. They can communicate complex ideas in a variety of forms. So um, it's not just through vocal, it's not just through verbal and nonverbal actually, in a variety of forms. Example, um, a musician uh, showing his feelings and emotions through his music. Right? Understand words, sounds, or images. Imagine new possibilities because you're creative, you're artistic. You can imagine new possibilities. Who knows what will happen five years from now? Persevere to reach goals and make them happen. Most musicians, most dancers, most artists really shows perseverance in reaching their goals. They really have that focus towards doing what they really like and improving and being successful on their chosen field. So engaging in quality arts of education experiences provide students with an outlet for powerful creation, ex a creative expression, communication, aesthetically rich understanding, and connection to the world around them. Being able to critically read, write, and speak about art should not be the sole constituting factor. So oh, this is what I've been telling you about the way I have learned the musical something <laughs> before, right? Um, they need to be able to connect it to the world, to their lives. Actually, this is true to almost all topics and subjects. Considerably more dialogue discussions and research are necessary to form a deeper picture of the arts and creativity more broadly. The cultivation of imagination and creativity and the formation of deeper theories surrounding multimodality and multiliteracies in the arts are paramount, is very important. Eliot Eisner posited a valuable um, lessons or benefits that education can learn from arts and he summarized these into eight um, number one is form and content cannot be separated how something is said or done shapes the content of experience in educated education how something is taught how curricula are organized and how schools are designed impact upon what students will learn so these side effects may be the real main effects of practice right so they're not separated like how something is done and um, the meaning the essence on what you're doing on what you have encoded they can never be separated so how you did something affects the the um the outcome right number two everything interacts there is no content without form and no form without content when the content of a form is changed uh, there so too is the form altered form and content are like two sides of a coin okay so they go hand in hand if there's a change in the content in the form then there will be a, a change a big change in the um the outcome also or the content next nuance matters to have the extent to which teaching is an art attention to nuance is critical or the changes it can also be said that the aesthetic lives in the details that the maker can shape in the course of creation right so the beauty is already made in the 
details of how a maker has shaped or worked on something how you move how you have prepared for the movement affects actually the outcome of the dance same with music same with painting same with any forms of art it can also okay how a word is spoken how a gesture is made how a line is written and how melody is played all affect the character of the whole all depend upon the modulation of the nuances that constitute the act fourth surprise is not to be seen as an intruder in the process of inquiry but as a part of the rewards one reaps when working artistically so well there's always a surprise in there are some people who says like i hate surprises but not here okay so no surprise no discovery no discovery no progress which is very true educators should not resist surprise but create the conditions to make it happen you've got to be flexible and you've got to know that a lot of things which you have not planned and have not expected could actually happen educators uh, sorry it is one of the most powerful sources of intrinsic satisfaction learning something um, having a good result of what one has done which you have not actually expected gives you an a self-gratification okay no need for motivation to be happy but it's there you know fifth slowing down perception is the most promising way to see what is actually there it is true that we have certain words to designate high levels of intelligence we describe somebody as being swift or bright or sharp or fast on the pickup so for us those who are fast are actually more intelligent are good are better are the best speed in its swift state is a descriptor of those we call smart yet one of the qualities we ought to be promoting in our schools is a slowing down of perception the ability to take one's time to smell the flowers to really perceive in the dewy sense and not merely to recognize what one looks at all right so same with wine um if you age like wine you're 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 like you're elegant you're amazing you taste better if fermented well um a vinegar tastes a, a, a better tasting vinegar is actually the one that's fermented the longer coffee uh, which is brewed the longer is also um, better tasting and better smelling sixth the limits of language are not the limits of cognition okay not just because you can't pull the words not just because you can't grope or you keep on groping for words and you cannot get them does mean that you have low intelligence no that does not limit you that does not mean that you have limited rec- uh, cognition we know more than we can tell in common terms literacy refers essentially to the ability to read and to write but as we have had already in the previous chapters no that's not lit that's not what literacy really is literacy can be reconceptualized as the creation and use of a form of representation that will enable one to create meaning meaning that will not take the impress of language in its conventional form in addition literacy is associated with high level forms of cognition we tend high level we tend to think that in order to know one has to be able to say however um, polani reminds us we know more than we can tell um, i think some of you have watched this movie already uh, this is every child is special and well we know already that linguistically speaking this child is a bit handicapped he is dyslexic but artistically he's like amazing he's filled with so many um with so much creativity and ideas and knowledge right so for those who have not watched this movie please do watch especially our future educators every child is special next somatic experience is one uh, somatic experience pertains to what our body has done has felt has as has been to right 
um, is one of the most important indicators that someone has gotten it right related to the multiple ways in which we represent the world through our multiple forms of literacy is the way in which we come to know the world through the entailments of our body sometimes one knows a process or an event through one's skin now I, i'll go very literal on this um we know already uh, you know the story of um the firefly um who has been told by his mom I, yeah i think it's a firefly who's been told that not to go- get closer to the flame or else something bad will happen almost the same with us uh, i can remember myself um even though i know that when you touch the flame in a con- in candle uh, you'll get burned or, or or it's painful but i will still do that as a child i will still do that and up until now i i keep <laughs> i keep doing that hopefully you'll not um you'll not think that oh something is wrong with her mind because most probably some of you are doing this also uh like when we test the water if it's hot already we we still we still we still find ways to to um touch the water right okay uh next is um sometimes one knows the process or an event through one's skin there last one is open-ended tasks permit the exercise of the imagination and an exercise of the imagination is one of the most important of human aptitudes it is imagination not necessity that is the mother of invention again it is imagination which is the mother of invention and it's not the necessity okay um imagination is the source of new possibilities in the arts imagination is a primary virtue so it should be in the teaching of mathematics in all of the sciences in history and indeed in virtually all that humans create this achievement would require for its realization a culture of schooling in which the imaginative aspects of the human condition were made possible right so um in the in the previous uh, slides i have showed you how important art is how do we uh work on the curriculum in really like zeroing on art and the creativity of the kids how do we understand them how important what they are doing is in with regards to education now this time um let's characterize the artistically literate individuals we always ask what what is economic or um, ecological literacy now this then let's ask how can you say that someone is literate in art okay or in creativity now how would you characterize an artistically literate student first is that that person use a variety of artistic media a variety symbols and metaphors to communicate their own ideas and respond to the artistic communication of others you can use different media media and symbol song dance and not only not only um letters but mm, other media also next develop creative personal realization in at least one art form in which they continue active involvement as an adult so they are able to like choose already what they really want and then they can just uh keep on honing that until they become adults so examples are the painters the the um, sculptors the the sculptors the um, the musicians right next is cultivate culture history and other connections through diverse forms and genres of art where they're able to cultivate they are able to add and develop our culture and our history by connecting themselves in different forms different forms like acting dancing and more and find joy inspiration peace intellectual stimulate stimulation and meaning when they participate in the uh, in the arts they are not forced to do it not just for grades <laughs> but not for numbers but they they really are happy doing it okay they are not pressured doing it next is they seek artistic experiences and support the arts in their communities so merely watching something from youtube or enrolling yourselves in uh, different um classes that is one way of showing that one is literate artistically speaking okay because they see the the importance of it and they really do something about it right um one that we cannot avoid 
in every type of literacies in educational based pedagogy we've always have issues so issues in teaching creativity in i'm inviting everyone to watch the link which i will be sending after i sent this uh link of this um video lesson okay so please watch the ted talk on creativity and innovation by sir ken robinson the title is do school scale creativity in 2006 so he has actually challenged educators to do things these are first educate the well-being of learners and shift from there I educate the well-being of learners and shift from the conventional learnings toward academic ability alone give equal weight to the arts and you and humanities and to physical education facilitate learning and work towards simulating stimulating curiosity among learners awaken and develop powers of creativity among learners and view intelligence as diverse dynamic and distinct contrary to common belief that it should be academic ability geared now this is a very good video it's actually eye-opening even i myself i come to uh, think and realize also how how i since i'm a college uh, instructor i think about how i deal with the the, the things that <laughs> children do okay how i how i react to what they do and sometimes i i forget i tend to forget that i was once a child also Right, so um, this is going to be the end of uh, this video lesson and uh, I'll be sending the link. Have a great day everyone.